this is uh, september december 22 question very on this on the basis of ratios and interpretation a very important topic let's see the requirement of the question first calculate for treat co the equivalent ratios to those provided for the confectionery manufacturing sector so it's a confectionery manufacturing sector five marks just five marks for calculation and analyze the performance in terms of ratios and financial position in comparison to its sector averages and it's worth 15 marks where we have to analyze the above ratios now the sector averages have been given see following ratios have been given one is roc return on capital employed net asset turnover gp margin operating profit margin current ratio inventory holding period gearing ratio the formula is debt divided by equity collection period 15 days so we have uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 7 8 eight ratios we have eight ratios first we have to calculate the same ratios for treatco it's a manufacturer of confectionery sector averages have been given this is a typical question we where we have to compare the company's performance and position with respect to the sector averages. Extracts have been given for profit and loss account and balance sheet. For property plan and equipment, we have note number one. For retained earning, we have note number two. For overdraft, we have note number three. This is the additional information which we can incorporate into our discussion. So first one is the property plan and equipment relates to retail sector stores operated by treatco and the manufacturing plant all of which are depreciated on a straight line basis over 20 years the original cost was 637.84 and directors are now replacing and updating much of the plant and equipment these this means that these are old assets and one problem is with old asset that they needs repair and maintenance huge repair and maintenance but good thing is that if the value of asset is low, that results in low capital employed and your return on capital employed might be improved. But uh, as you invest and update your property plan and equipment, that raises the value of PPE and as well as capital employed. So your capital employed and asset turnover might affect due to this given information. But in future, if you have updated and good plant and property plan and equipment that will boost your sales and that will increase your productivity in terms of cost, in terms of benefits. So first point is important for your discussion. Treatco paid a dividend of 7.14 million during the year, despite the concern raised by some directors over the existing overdraft. So we have overdraft of uh, like uh, data is given in thousand. So it's 24 million overdraft. And despite having overdraft, such dividend is a question from the directors that why you are paying dividend? What is the reason behind that? So we don't have any information about share price so that we can easily talk about that, whether share price is depressed so that in order to motivate shareholder, in order to maximize the wealth of shareholders, we have given the dividend. And what about the history of dividend? It's also missing in this question. What about the dividend of other companies that's not given here? So from the profit, you can see profit is 4.354 million. And this is dividend is 7.14. So we can easily find out the payout ratio, but we have no clue about the company's policy of dividend. Third one is the overdraft. Why we have used overdraft is for working capital management purpose and does not form part of the long-term financing of the treat co. So that means the property plan and equipment we need to finance. We have we can either finance it from long-term debt and long-term equity financing. So that means working capital management is a concern for us. The overdraft shows here that our working capital management is not good. Let's see what will be the situation. Treatco sells its product through supermarket chain in order to, in addition to its own retail stores now. They have retail stores and they have supermarket chains. Now, this is B2B, business to business. So supermarket chains are normally dominant. 
So that results in like um, it affects your working capital in terms of uh, receivable collection period, in terms of inventory management as well, because you need to carry good inventory in order to facilitate your large supermarket chains. Most companies in the sector exclusively sell through their own retail stores. But here we are selling via retail stores as well as supermarkets. So we don't need, we need information about that uh, this sector average might be based on those companies which sell to retail stores only. That might be a possibility. Now, after analyzing these four points, now we need some ratios so that we can analyze it further. So ratios, working, and uh, that's comparison of uh, Treatco and sector average. First one is return on capital employed. Formula is profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed. It's operating profit over capital employed into 100. So in this example, what is operating profit? Operating profit is given 7466. It's 7466. What is capital employed? The capital employed is equity plus long-term debts. So we have equity, 25968. 25968 equity. Long-term debt, we have uh, 33621. And this is multiplied by 100. So let's find out seven four double six over two five nine six eight plus three three six two one and this is it's twelve point five two. So it's twelve point five. And what about sector average? Sector average is 28.8. So we have a low return on capital employed. One of the explanation of return on capital employed is profit margin. Other is uh, the net asset turnover. So my next ratio is net asset turnover. And what is the formula? It's sales over capital employed. Capital employed is already there. So it's 25968 plus 33621. And what about my sales? Sales is 214553. 214553. Let's calculate 214553 over 33622. And that is 3.6. It's 3.6 times. And the industry average given is 2.4 times. It's quite surprising that the rose is fallen, is reduced 28.8 versus 12.5, but the net asset turnover is more than that. It means that the net assets is low. That's why the asset turnover is high because we are generating more sales uh, as compared to our asset base. That means the assets are old. We have already utilized those assets. The third ratio we have to calculate is the main one that is profit margin, both gross profit and operating profit. Gross profit margin 55 and operating profit margin 12. So it's 55 and it's 12. Gross profit percentage, it's gross profit over sales into 100. So my sales is uh, 214553 
its operating profit margin, its profit before interest and tax over sales, and it's uh, 214553. Now I need gross profit and operating profit. Gross profit is 106544. It's 106544. And what about operating profit margin? It's uh, 7466. 7466. Now see. Calculation. So it's 106544 over 214553. It's multiplied by 100. It's 49.65. 49.7. So we have a low gross profit percentage as compared to industry. Maybe due to low margin, because we are also working with the supermarkets and the supermarkets are not allowing us good profit margin. That might be the reason. Operating profit margin, let's see, 7466 looks very low. Surprisingly, it's 3.5. It's quite low. Industry's operating profit margin is 12%. And our operating profit margin is only 3.5. What it indicates, the operating profit margin, if it is lower, it indicates the poor management of expenses. And that is the reason that might be, a, I already told you that uh, repair and maintenance might be a reason for that because we have, a, we have old assets. So that's why. Other detail of expenses, we have no idea here. So we can write in the answer that we need some more information about the cost structure, the details of the distribution cost and details of the other cost here. No information has provided here in terms of what operating of expenses, what constitute operating expenses, what constitute cost of sales. If such information is available, then it's easy to talk about this. Now the next ratio is Current ratio, which is 1.8. Current ratio, which is current assets over current liability, it is 1.8. And uh, current assets, we have uh, 47996. 47996. And we have current liabilities. Current liabilities, it's uh, 50391. 50391. Clearly, its uh, liabilities are more than assets. So, 391, it's 0 0.85. Clearly, not good sign of poor liquidity. And you know, poor liquidity, why? Because the overdraft is quite high, and we have already paid dividend this year. So, it has a negative effect on our cash flows. Similarly, we have um, seems to be poor working capital management. That's that might be the reason. Let's see. So the next one is inventory turnover period, which is 25 days. Industry is 25 days. And uh, we have inventory period. Formula is uh, stock, closing stock divided by COGS into 365. What is closing stock? Inventory is 30393. It's uh, 30393. What is COGS? COGS is 108009. 108009 into 365. So three zero three nine six over one one zero eight zero zero nine into three sixty five. It's one zero two one zero two one zero three days. Very very high. What might be the reason? Just twenty five days and it's one zero three days. One reason I think it's due to the supermarket sales. 
industry in industry most are selling through retail outlets so i guess the supermarket is having a good bargaining power so they force us to hold stock for their demand meeting their demand having a good relationship with them so in order to match this we have to keep this remember this is a confectionery business we have perishable item as well still we have good inventory turnover so lots of cash is tied up in stock that's why our working capital is poor we need to do something in order to drop it down or have some discussion with the supermarket that how we can minimize this next is about gearing ratio so my gearing ratio the industry gearing ratio is 43% next is receivable collection period so its gearing ratio formula is debt divided by equity and afterwards i have to calculate the account receivable collection period that is account receivable over sales into 365 and sales is uh, 214553 and it's equity and debt let's identify what is equity equity is um, 25968 25968 and that is 336 Three three six two one long term debts. Three three six two one debts are higher than equity, so this ratio is also very excessive, in which is one twenty nine point four. It's one twenty nine point four percentage, very high. very high in terms of uh, the others in terms of industry average which is only 43% that tells you the story that as compared to this my position is not good i have a good risk profile here so my lender as well as shareholder might be worried about it whether the company is able to pay the debts on time or interest on time so what would be the cause of this because we haven't included overdraft here so we have a good debts low equity and now we need to replace our ppp big concern so i guess equity financing would be a more suitable things to decide to use this rather than debt financing because we have already have high gearing ratio we have low profitability now account receivable value Account receivable is uh, trade and other receivables is one seven six zero three, one seven six zero three into three sixty five. This is my last ratio. Overall profitability is not good, working capital is not good, only asset turnover is something showing good thing. Now let me calculate it again. One seven six zero three over two one four five five three multiplied by three sixty five. Thirty days. So it's showing thirty days, and that industry ratio is fifteen days. The collection period is also doubled, and that is this is again due to the my customer is supermarket. Supermarket is very influencing, dominant supermarket. So they are not paying in time. so as a result that shows due to inventory holding period and account receivable period my current ratio is not good i have cash flow problems i have overdraft issues so i need to manage my receivables my inventory profitability my uh, expenses in such a way and you know net asset turnover looks good now as compared to industry but when we invest in property plan and equipment and that uh, obviously that would affect the capital employed capital employed would be raised and as a result the net asset turnover will go down so overall this is the altogether performance in position now best way is 
to answer this type of question that in terms of performance and in terms of position in the heading of performance, we'll talk about those ratios that relates to performance, such as return on capital employed, asset turnover, GP margin, operating profit margin. And in terms of position, the current ratio, inventory, gearing ratio, and account receivable. Let's see the official answer of this. And let's see how many points we have already discussed are there in the answer. Street course cross profit margin is straightforward. The heading of performance is straightforward. The discussion about the ratio. Street codes cross profit margin is slightly below the market average. And this is not surprising as the company selling goods to supermarkets already told you, which are likely at lower margin than goods sold directly to public because they have to uh, consider their margin as well. However, operating profit is below the industry average. It is unclear what causes this, but it does suggest cost control issues as this is much worse than the average compared to difference in gross profit margin. Obviously, it is the issue with your expenses and no detail has been provided regarding the operating expenses, the distribution cost, what is there. And the fact that the asset held by the company are old and may need replacement may mean there have been large repair and maintenance in the year or have had impairment charges applied to very good point. Impairment is a good point because old assets are there. Chances of impairment is quite high. Rose is much lower than the industry average and this is a direct result of the low operating profit margin as the net asset turnover is above the sector average. The secondary ratio for Rose is the asset turnover multiplied by profit margin. But our asset turnover is quite good. So why this is low? Uh, so this is high. So this is quite low. That's why overall return on capital employed is low. The fact that the ROC is low in comparison to the industry average is concerning as this figure would drop further. This is a point important following an investment in property, plan and equipment. Currently, the company doesn't have the cash to acquire assets. So replacements are likely to be lead to an increase in debt, whether due to loan or leasing which would further reduces the return on capital employed. The net asset turnover is higher than the industry average. Again, it must be noted that once the PP is replaced, this will be significantly reduced. Now, as far as the position is concerned, the current ratio is lower than the industry average, and this is due to overdraft, poor working capital management. It appears that a lot of cash is tied up in inventory. This could be due to the need to hold large volume of goods to meet the need of the supermarket, but it could also signify issues over demand for treat company's product. Demand is high. The inventory holding period is more than four times as compared to the industry average concerning the company selling perishable food product. This is of a concern as item may require to be written down or off. Good point. Street codes receivable collection period is not particularly high at 30 days, but it's still twice that of industry average. Keeping in mind, that we are selling to supermarket having longer payment terms. Most, most of the sectors sell goods to own stores and so these are likely to be cash sales. As a result, receivable days is not comparable with many companies in the sector. Good point. We are not comparing like with like. The gearing ratio is quite high, which is a significant concern, particularly in the light of the cash position. You have to finance your interest. You have to service your interest. The company is likely to need investment in non-current asset. It is doubtful whether it will be possible to raise debt finance or obviously not possible. So good point is here that we could mention that when we have to need funds, either equity financing, we have to use because if we use the lease financing, still we have to consider lease financing as a debt. So it's not affordable to have that much of debt. So equity is a good option. Right shares is a good option here. We have already paid good dividends. So discussion of right share must be there. The large dividend payment is questionable. Again. So in order to conclude, overall the results are mixed and further information is required to fully investigate the performance and position. Further investigation is required of the composition of operating expenses. Neither the inventory nor the cash position looks very strong. However, the receivable is reasonable. Why it is reasonable? Just because we are selling to the store, further aged analysis of inventory and the classification of receivable would also be useful. Finally, gearing is high and so more information related to the terms of borrowing would also be like debt financing maturity is important. When we are going to pay off 
if it is going to mature soon, then again, it's a worry for us that we need to restructure, we need to replace that debt financing with other debt financing or equity financing. What about uh, new investment from where we have to use this new investment? We have to reduce our overdraft as well. So this is a big question mark. So in terms of cash flows, in terms of working capital, in terms of profitability, the company is not looking good.